Hey guys, so in this tutorial we are going to be building out um, a basic logbook tracker or lift tracker for uh, individual or multiple athletes. If you want the finished version, if you just want it all done for you, you can get the free version here on the website or if you want to download this um, just so you can compare uh, your formulas against any of the ones I've written and then go ahead and just download for free and it should look a little something like this. Cool, so this is the finished um, product. This is what we're going to, to look to get to create with you guys. So first of all, just go ahead and open a blank spreadsheet. So how do we actually go about collecting this data? Tables are brilliant in Excel because they allow you to find information quickly. You can filter it um, and it just creates it in a nice obvious pattern for you to follow later on. So within our data page, we just need to add all the information that we feel important um, about what we're trying to, to track. So we know we need the athlete's name. We know they need the type of lift they did. Um, we know we need somehow an estimated one rep max. And we also need to know the date achieved and how we did that. So the way I like to do this, you're going to put your titles in first. So we'll go date, athlete name lift the weight that they used for me i'm going to do in kilograms and the reps that they performed then over here i can put estimated one rm what i'm going to do now is create a table from that so all i'm going to do is select um, i'm going to come down a couple of places doesn't really matter how much go to insert and i am going to go on table up here now I've already made my headers, so I wanna make sure I tick my table has headers, press okay. And you can now see, if I zoom in a bit, here is my table. Now the beautiful thing about tables is whatever you do to one of the cells in that column, it will generally recreate it down the columns itself. So I know I wanna set all of these to a short date. And within this, section okay i'm going to put that drop down menu back in so i'm going to go data data validation equals sorry equals name you see it's there i can drag it down and now all of those have that if i go on data validation again for the lifts put it as a list exercises and again i'm going to drag that down and you'll see that it's all there okay so when it comes to the estimated one rep max this is the formula that i use apologies this is off the top of my head i think i use i think it's brzezicki probably pronounced that completely wrong uh, but that's the formula that i prefer to use because generally i found it actually puts out slightly lower um, estimated one rep maxes than some of the other formulas and when i'm programming and training i generally like to work off that slightly lower number rather than overshooting my athletes and then having them failing percentages but it's kind of personal preference um, personal choice there's lots of formulas out there but basically this is um the sum that you need to do so in this estimated one rep max formula what i'm going to do is write equals i know it's a formula the sum so it's the weight, so I know I can click on weight, divided by bracket 1.0278 minus bracket 0.0278 multiplied by the reps. So I just click in E2 because that's the reps column. Okay. Then I'm going to close that formula out. I put every single bracket needs to be closed. So obviously my purple one relates to my purple one, red to red, and then black to black on the sum. Press enter. Okay. So you can see it comes up with zero and it's auto filled in all of the spaces. Now, if you're like me and you like a nice clean spreadsheet, there is something you can do to make this a little tidier. So I'm going to make this formula a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if 
put this at the front. So if the sum of all of this, okay, is equal to zero, comma, the value I want it to present is blank. So if I press two inverted commas, that's going to show up as blank. If the value isn't zero, i.e. it's more than zero, I want it to work out the sum of eight divided by 1.027. Two seven eight minus not point naught two seven eight multiplied by the reps. Close, close. Okay, so that's my sum. So basically, that's the same sum, but all it's saying is if the sum equals zero, it's going to show a blank, but if it's the sum is more than zero, it will show the answer. So that should now, oh, one too many. Oh, two more. It will all disappear. So now, for example, if I press 50 times five, it puts my estimated one rep max as um, 56 kilos. I can shorten those decimal places by going to home and just shortening them off there to give a nice round number. Okay, so I can now put on the first and first, 1990, athlete one, deadlifted, well, let's go with bench press, 50 kilos, five times, which gave them estimated one rep max of 56. Say so they're a very, very good trainer from the 10th of the first, 1990, athlete one, bench pressed again. This time, they hit 60 for five reps, do the whole column, sorry, not the whole column, if I select them all, I can take them down to that one at max. So there we've got a basic track. Now, while this is very easily readable now, once you've got loads of different athletes in here, it can get a bit messy. So that's where we use the dashboard to find out where they achieve their numbers, what they achieved and how they achieved. So we've basically gone through creating those drop down menus here with the named ranges, creating a table with the drop down menus and the formula in. And now from here, whenever I want to add something new, I can just write the date, 2nd, 10th, 2020, and it automatically creates a new line for me. I can put automatically fills in that information and all the formulas as well. Now, just quickly, there's one thing I want to do on this is if you want to protect your formulas, this is where the, uh, they get quite long. At the front, again, so I'm adding a new bit of formula. If I write if error, uh, comma, uh, bracket, add a comma. So if there is an error in that equation, I want it to be blank, or I could put a little word that says, NA or something like that, but I'm going to personally leave it blank and press enter. So it still looks the same, the numbers still pop up the same, but now if I were to accidentally type numbers or letters in there, sorry, it's not going to come up with a horrible sign that may later affect some of the findings um, when you're searching for information, okay? So it's just a nice way to uh, just clean up your formulas slightly.